I talked in previous videos a little bit about um, primary keys. Primary keys are essentially a way uh, to guarantee that we can identify each row uniquely. They're not required, but uh, a table without primary keys are, is pretty much useless. So <clears throat> we'll see when we create a, a table schema later on in the course that we there's a way to identify uh, a column as being the primary key. And in this case, in the products table, we have the product ID as the product ID. Now in the customers table, remember that, um, well, let's just bring it up here. Select splat from customers. Uh, the, the customer ID is the primary key for the customers table, and these are just strings that somebody made up. Uh, I've never really seen in my professional or educational career anybody just making up these IDs like they're doing in the Northwind database. That's that's kind of heinous in the pain. What I've seen and almost always use is just we identify each row by a number, and each row gets a unique number, and the number generally starts at one and counts by one. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so so on and so forth. So as we add new items to the table, these um, product IDs. Uh, allow us to uniquely identify every row. Now this is just row ordering and it just so happens in this case that the row order and the project IDs are the same but but the identifying column is actually a unique column. So I want to show you something here. Uh, these columns are set up as identity columns meaning every time you insert a row you can't insert a value into this column. Instead what happens is the database is responsible for just taking, uh, for incrementing a value every time that it inserts a new record. And the value doesn't necessarily, if you insert a row and it fails, like for example, if I insert a row, I can show you here. Actually, let's just, let's get to it. Insert into products uh, values. And I'm going to, I'm not sure what's nullable and what's not. So let's just, I could look at the scheme and just find out. But let's, let's do this the hard way. Product name. It is product name, product name, values, my new product. Okay, now notice that I'm just going to supply one value for product name here, and I'm not supplying a product ID. But primary keys, you always have to have an identifier. You have to have a value. Well, this primary key is set up just to do the, increment, the incremental count for us. So let's see if this works. Run it. Oh, it actually worked. Okay, one row is affected. So select, let's select, um, Splat from products, and let's just run that query. Go down to the bottom here. Notice here's my new product and a bunch of null values, and then uh, these aren't null, they're actually set to default values. We'll see later when we create our own scheme, as you can say, default zero, 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 zero. Anyway, but notice the 78 was created for me. The database said, okay, what's the last value we attempted to insert a product ID in for? And it was 77, so then it says 78. Let's do something a little trickier here. Uh, product name, let's do units in stock, and I'm going to try to put a string where a number is expected. So let's let's run this. F5, we get an error saying, hey, I can't convert this to a small int. So run that again, and uh, let's let's do uh, let's do a legitimate value now. Now my new other product, and then get rid of this. Actually, we'll just say there's five units in stock. Uh, run that. One row affected. Select splat from products. Let's go down to the bottom. And you see we have my new product, which I did just uh, a minute or two ago, and I got 78. Notice, though, my new other product is now 80. That's because 79 was wasted on that product I tried to insert that uh, it failed on. So as SQL is not necessarily taking the next incremental value in the product ID table or column. It's just it, it's storing that in the background. It's saying, well, the last value I used is 80, so the next time we do an insert, it's going to be 81, and, and that's stored elsewhere. In, in the SQL for this table, the products table. Anyway, so that's the uh, identity column a little bit. We'll see more when we create schemas, how identities work. We can set them up to be however. But I wanted you to note that, yes, we do have primary keys. Yes, they can be auto-generated. And more often than not, they are auto-generated.